With over 50 years of racing history, Circuit Zolder in Belgium was the venue for round three of the 2017 UCI BMX Supercross World Cup Tour. Originally built in 1963, the facility has gone on to host numerous motorsports events over the years. The events include 10 F1 Belgium Grand Prix, both the UCI Road and Cyclocross World Championships, the BMX Worlds in 2015, and now the BMX Supercross World Cup Tour. The Lotto BMX track sits inside the historic facility nestled into a wooded area towards the top of the circuit. Built in 2008, the track has grown from a small club track to a world-class venue drawing all levels of riders and is home to the Belgian national team. It's just, I just felt butterflies on my belly when I come to Solder, because last time I come to Solder it was when I grabbed the world title. It's a track that you need to be strong, you need to be fast, so it is kind of perfect for me. My expectation right now is hopefully get to finals and hopefully I can do the same as Papenal, the three, that, that would be so awesome. I'm happy I did well last weekend, but it's over now and um, we reset at zero this weekend. So I'm coming in as motivated as ever and, uh, and I want to just do the best I can. I know that if I go out and ride like I can, I'll likely do well and, and that's what I'm looking for this weekend. It's just another BMX race. I mean, this is my fourth weekend in a row, so by now it's just waking up in the morning, brush my teeth, put my shoes on, go race. That's what it feels like. Round one and two of the World Cup Tour took place in Papendal, the Netherlands. It was Frenchman Joris Dodet and Sylvain André who topped the podium on the men's side while local rider Laura Smulders scored back-to-back -back victories in the women's. Then it was a quick trip over the border into Belgium to the world-class venue in Houston Zolder for rounds three and four. It's always amazing to win a World Cup. The main event was a little crazy, you know, it's what we like and then, uh, yeah, it just took the win, so I'm really happy. Winning a World Cup, like, it was the first time for me and it doesn't happen every day even to do Sam and Connor and Mary, so it's special and it was even more special for me. I really wanted to get one double, that would be like the ultimate thing for this year, next to World Champs, of course. Yeah, double win at Pavanaugh, it's just awesome. The first World Cups of the year are always tough, you know, everyone's going fast and coming in ready and to be in the main both days is great and, and especially to end the weekend on the podium, that was really positive for me. Just kind of get back in the swing of things, you know, I put myself in the final both days on the box and walked away healthy, so can't complain. It's just learning and trying to wake up that I'm here again in the world scene and it's not about the result, but what you give on the track. If it's better than yesterday, it's, it's better. So that's what I want to do this weekend. The track here in Zolder was originally built in 2008. Since then, it's transformed into a world-level course, including an eight meter high start hill built in 2015 when the club hosted the World Championships. At 384 meters in length, the track is compact, tight and technical. This track's about as opposite of popping as you can get. It's tight and it's technical, really not much pedaling. It's all about hitting the jumps right this weekend. The Zolder track is really tight and technical. It's steep and you know sometimes you almost have to go slower to go faster. Short first straight, so inside gates are gonna be really important, whereas last week guys could go outside six, gate eight, you know, make it happen from out there. I don't think it's gonna be like that this weekend. The end of the first straight over that quad, it really opens up into the first turn. It's pretty wide, so. Uh, the closer you can get to the inside and, and kind of carve low and sprint out, the better. It's, it'll make it a lot harder for people to come underneath you and pass you. Compared to Poppendal, we're probably taking 20% amount of the pedals. I mean, after the first turn here, you really take three cranks the whole rest of the track. You're going to have to make backsides count because, you know, if you miss a pump, the next jump is kind of in your face and it, it's tricky. It's got some sections that people do different lines on. So you might have one guy jumping while one guy's on the ground and vice versa. So it, it does make it exciting for the fans because there are multiple line choices. It's about smooth laps all day long, staying on the inside gates and um, executing when it matters. The riders first go through round one with a last chance qualifier for those who miss the cut in the first round. 
Olympic bronze medalist Carlos Ramirez crashed into a fallen Alfredo Campo in heat five of round one and was forced into the last chance where he qualified through. Crash on my first lap. Everything starts from zero, so just gonna do my best, have fun, and get all the way there. Mariana Pajon dominated heat six, but Natalia Suvorova wasn't so lucky and had to fight for her place in the last chance round where she qualified through. I used my last chance, I get first, so after I just focus on my race. After the last chance round, the riders go into single elimination. The men have to battle it through from their round of 30 seconds while the women fight through from their eighths. In heat three of the men's 30 seconds, Tori Nyhawk dominated with Renato Resende riding in for a close second. Pulled my first two laps, kind of figuring the track out and everything, so we're off to a good start, want to keep it going. Connor Fields took charge of his heat in the round of 16s. Justin Kronk, a rising star from Australia, didn't make the transfer through. In the second heat of the women's eights, Merle Smulders crashed out on the first berm, ending her chance to move on. Things got serious in the men's round of eights as the intensity started to grow. In heat one, Connor Fields was locked into battle with Tuan Van Ghent as the pair moved on, but Jeremy Smith lost control heading into the third turn, taking him out of the race. We're working really hard for it, and the level is so close. Top 32 riders are so close to each other. Switzerland's David Graff had a nasty crash in Poppendahl, but he's back on the gas looking fast in heat two. He battled it out for the lead with Australian Anthony Dean. We're just kind of cruising into the day and got caught up on the back wheel of someone and took a crash. Thankfully for the uh, LCQ, I still got another shot at it. Got away with the win in that one and we're back in the game. Britain's Keelan Isidore had a bad crash on the third berm, taking him out for the rest of the weekend. With the field cut in half, it was time for the quarterfinals where the top four qualify through. In the women's quarters, the Dutch riders dominated the first round. I'm feeling good. My legs are better than Sunday at Pavendal, so hopefully I'll have a good day. Mariana Pajon showed why she's the dual Olympic champion in the women's second quarter, winning from start to finish. Reynolds came from behind and jumped into a qualifying spot on the second berm while France's Camille Mayer earned the final qualifying spot. The time was good. The timing down the gate is good. I think it can be better, much better. So I have the next round to do it. Britain's Bethany Schriever came out of lane one and took control of her race, cruising to the easy win. Stephanie Hernandez, who won the world championships here in 2015, tucked in behind Rebecca Petsch for third. Brazil's Priscilla Stavo rode in for the fourth. I just race, I enjoy lap by lap, and I'm very excited for what's coming on. After battling through the earlier rounds, it was time for the men's quarterfinals. In the first quarter, Corbin Schirra, Dave Vanderberg, and Anthony Dean took the lead into the first berm. Romain Mathieu and Federico Villagas battled it down the second straight for the fourth qualifying spot. Villagas took the inside line on the second berm to sneak into the next round. In quarter two, Kyle Evans and Sylvain Andre battled hard down the first straight. Kai Sagakabera and Niels Bensik were locked in a battle to grab the last position as Evans, Andre, and Graf all qualified through. Bensink took the final qualifying spot in a photo finish, knocking Sakakabera out of the race. With a hole shot in quarter three, Connor Fields led the Latvian Kristen Kriegers and Colombia's Carlos Ramirez around the tight course. That left five riders fighting for the last position, but a crash took American Jared Garcia out of the running. Kay Stindl of Germany made it over the line in fourth to qualify with Fields, Kriegers, and Ramirez. I made a big point in training and practice to just really focus on getting the smooth line on that turn and riding aggressive but defensive at the same time. The fourth and final quarterfinal was tense with Tori Nyhog and Edzus Tremenis banging elbows down the start hill. Nyhog soon took control of the race, moving ahead of the Latvian as they entered the second straight. Nyhog and Tremenis qualified in first and second with Dutchman Joris Harmsen in third and Russia's Alexander Kadyshev in fourth. After the men's quarters, it's time for the women in their semi-finals. the start list reads 
Smolders, Pajon, Bao, Hernandez, Stancil, Reynolds, Vainsta, and Admakina. And we're going to go to the 388 of Bao. For me as a person, I'm pretty calm. But the semifinal is, yeah, that's when the stress begins. And that is when you want to be in the final. The 100 bike in gate two, Mariana Pajo. I do BMX because I love it. It's my passion. When I'm on the gate, it's just the adrenaline and stuff. That's what I love about BMX. And doing it from the Netherlands, Laura Smalders. I'm feeling really good and I'm going very fast. Of course, I want to be on the podium again. I think I've got a good shot. Waiting for the call. Mariana Pajon, Laura Smulders, and Stephanie Hernandez all stormed out of the gate and down the first straight. Looks like Pajon goes out of her way just a bit to shut Smulders down as they go into the first corner. So it's going to be Pajon, Smulders, and Hernandez, one, two, and three. Lauren Reynolds snuck into fourth on the third berm to take the last qualifying spot behind Hernandez. Smolders just passed Pajon at the line, earning herself first lane choice rights for the final. The official, Smolders, Pajon, Hernandez, and Reynolds. As we can see the start list for heat number two, semi-final. Plate 41, Natalia Suvarova. Not expecting anything, just go. It's but makes anything can happen, so just need to fight until the finish line. The 210 bike of Simone Christensen. My okay, case has been good all day and felt good down the hill. I just got to sort out the first jump. Lined up and ready. In the second semi, the Russians stormed out out of lanes three and five to take the lead down the first straight. Simone Christensen rode a smart lap to dive on the inside and take the lead into the pro straight. Shriver tried to claw back into fourth, but crashed out and missed the cut. Christensen taking advantage of the experience she has. Matilda Dodu crashed on the third berm, taking New Zealand's Rebecca Petch out of the running. The leaders hung on through the third straight with Camille Mayer finding a way into fourth position to qualify to the main. The official Christensen, Bondarenko, Suvarova, and Mayer. I think it was the first time I won my semifinal in the World Cup. I didn't even feel like it was that good of a lap because I cased a bit on the last straight, but still, like, I was happy. So, yeah, that was probably the best one, so pretty good. With the top eight women now moving on to the final, it was time for the men to battle on through. Your Olympic gold medalist, Connor Fields. I've got plenty of experience to draw from, and not much really comes at me like a curveball these days. It's just go out and execute and put yourself in a good position. The fastest man on the track today, Corbin Shaw. There's not a guy that gets on that hill that's like, man, I want to make the semi and I'm good. It's like everybody wants to go out there and, and I, I think everybody races to win. Waiting for the call. In semi one, Olympic champ Connor Fields got the whole shot ahead of Corbin Shaw coming out of lane two. Australia's Anthony Dean got the inside lane out of lane four to tuck in behind the two leaders. Fields, Sherrod, Dean, one, two, and three coming out of the second corner. The rest of the pack battled it out for the last qualifying spot down the pro straight. It was Argentina's Federico Villagas who managed to position himself down the third straight to secure the last qualifying spot. Betty Villagas with the fourth place along with Anthony Dean, Corbin Sherrod, and Connor Fields. That's your official. I knew I didn't have the momentum to pull out ahead, so the smarter thing was to back off and, and maybe battle for third and fourth rather than, you know, go for that second and first position. Vanderberg, Tremanis, Evans, Andre, Graf, Kadyshev, Stindl, Nyhog. Tori Nyhog, there he goes, lane eight, the Canadian. 
I want to battle up front during the laps and, and be in the main and have a shot at a win or a podium. You know, that's where I came to this World Cup year and, and that's where I want to be every weekend. And in lane one, the Dutch national champion, Dave Vandenberg. Think about yourself, think about what you got to do. I aim for the final again and hopefully another podium. Semi-final number two, elite man, ready and willing. In the second semi eight, Zeus Tremendous from Latvia got closed out on the start hill by Dave Vanderberg and Kyle Evans. Vanderberg, Tremanis, and Evans. Evans seems to be in a bit of trouble because Graf is in third with Andre in fourth. Tremendous took the smart inside line to work his way back into second on the pro straight. Graf, Andre, and Nyhog fought for the last two qualifying positions down the third straight with Nyhog and Graf moving on. Vandenberg, Tremontis, Graf, Nyhog for the official. With the semis now done and dusted, it was all eyes to the top of the hill as the women made their way up the stairs and into the gate for their main event. From Venezuela, Hernandez. I did a good semifinal. I say, wow, if I can do this in semifinal, so I will just give my everything on the final. And the golden girl, we have Mariana Pajon. Even if I already won world championships or even the gold medal, I want to be even better. That's why I wake up every day to just be better than yesterday. With the best result from the semis, it was Laura Smulders who took the inside in lane one with Mariana Pajon next in lane two. A lot of talent on the gate as we wait for the official call. Pajon had a great snap off the gate and dove to the inside to close out Smulders at the bottom of the hill. Former world champion Stephanie Hernandez also got a great start from lane five to work her way into second in the first turn. Denmark's Simone Christensen aced the second straight and passed Hernandez on the inside of the first berm to move into second. Pajon in that first place position with Christensen in second, Hernandez in three going down that third straightaway. Riding a strong lap, Christensen tucked in behind Pajon to earn the second with Hernandez holding off the pack to earn the third podium position. The official is Pajon, Christensen, Hernandez, Reynolds, Suvarova, Smolders, and Bondo Ranko. Right before the main, when we were on the gate, we stood up and it was like so windy. Uh, even the lights were moving. I was focused on my gate, on the red light, red light, red light, and then I went through the wind really good. I knew I had to just have a good snap and then go to the right and close doors, and that's what I did. Just like tried to follow Mariana over the first jump and I was behind her and make sure I closed the back of uh, Laura because I wasn't sure where she was at. I was super surprised that I was leading like in the first straight. Stephanie came very fast from the outside. So I like took behind her into the first corner. Simone did a great second corner. So he just let me lay the third place. Yeah, I made a like a pretty smooth move onto Hernandez into the second corner and then I just tried to keep it. I did some really good minors and I just had a flow on the track. I just wanted to do this time trial the best time I could be. Weather quickly became an issue for the men's final with light rain and wind starting to blow. Here's the lineup. Fields, Shira, Vandenberg, Tremanis, Dean, Graf, Villegas and Nyhog. Late eight, Canadian, Tori Nyhog. When I line up on the gate for a main event, I'm just staying relaxed and just focusing on what I have to do. At that point, everyone's fast. You just have to really focus on uh, maximizing yourself and, and doing the best you can do. If you make the final, anybody could win the race. It doesn't matter what gate you're in. And, and I've always believed that. So I come in with a fresh mind and, and to go out there and give it my all. The other USA rider, Olympic gold medalist Connor Fields, he's in lane one. Destiny is in his hands. We're on deck. Elite men. Corbin Sherraw had a slow start as fellow American Connor Fields and Dave Vanderberg took the lead into turn one. Fields just takes that line, takes the lead. 
With Fields and Vandenberg both leading the race, it was a fight over the third and final podium spot. Latvia's Edzus Tremanis rocked the technical straight and pumped himself into third position in the last turn. Connor Fields, the Olympic champion, showed his mastery of the track and crossed the line in first. Fields, Vandenberg, Tremanis, Dean, Nyhawk, Villegas, Chira, and Graf. Main was great. Uh, I was in lane one. I had a great start. Battling with uh, Dave Vandenberg on the outside. The turning point was the semifinal. It gave me the inside lane, and that was the difference in that tight first turn. And I was able to take the whole shot and run a smooth lap all the way to the finish line. You know, when you bind Connor, you know he's not going to make any mistakes, or at least not big ones. Yeah, it was just too fast to pass. So, yeah, second was everything for the day. Last weekend in Papenau, I also finished second, but I wasn't that happy because I got passed on the line. Four or five times I've gotten second or third in the last couple of years. So it's been nice to be really consistent, but it was nice to kind of to get, get that win. After three rounds, Laura Smulders sits atop the women's rankings with 380 points and Mariana Pajon in second, just 20 points behind. With some consistent results over the three races, Denmark's Simone Christensen sits in the third position. With a third and a first, American Connor Field sits atop the men's rankings with 340 points. Tori Nyhog, the Canadian, moves into second with 300, while Dave Vanderberg and Sylvain Andre are close behind. I felt confident I could do better this year, and now with three rounds done and two semis and two podiums, it feels, uh, it feels good. We have a mechanic, we have a director, we have a filmer, we have a massage therapist to be able to go out and perform well and deliver a good result for all of them who work just as hard as I do, it's a, it's a good feeling. It's, it's cool we brought them up on the podium and, and all that it was great. This win feels amazing. I really needed this one emotionally for my country, for everybody that really uh, loves me and believes in me, it was amazing. So this is for me and for the rest of the people in Colombia that believe in me. I really want to make my two fall places into a podium. And um, yeah, so, so happy to be able to do that. At the moment, I'm just happy because I don't expect anything and I'm just on the podium. So that is make my day, that is make my weekend. And that is show me that I'm going in the, in the good path. That's a wrap from round three of the World Cup Tour from Circuit Zolder and the Lotto BMX track. We'll see you next for round four and more BMX racing action. Another podium would be sick, but uh, right now I'm pretty stoked also just to be pretty consistent in the finals. Yeah, definitely going for a podium again.